Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our time together this evening. Looking forward to uh, sharing with you and hearing from some of our young folks tonight. Um, let me begin with some announcements as normal. Remind you that tomorrow evening we are looking forward to the National Day of Prayer here at 7 p.m. Uh, it will be live and in person. We will also be live streaming it. Um, and then it will be rebroadcast two different times after that, one uh, at WBTX, one later that night, uh, and then one, uh, I think, the next day as well. And so that is tomorrow evening. We have several uh, pastors, other folks from the community coming in that will be lead us in, leading us in various prayers for different aspects of our community and our nation. And um, you don't need to pray aloud. You can just come and pray. There's lots of things to pray about in our nation. We also need people to sign up for Vacation Bible School. A lot of different ways you can help out and serve. Uh, we need a lot of people to uh, do that, and so encourage uh, you to sign up. Let Becky know how you can help. Two new Sunday school classes that are coming up uh, very soon. One of those is going to be taught uh, the Daniel Plan by Sister Karen Poff. And uh, the other one is going to be taught by Ryan and Ashley Edwards. And they're open. It's a youth, young adult, um, young married type of a class. And you can let them know what you might be interested in. And they'll uh, see what they could do to be able to put that together. So find a Sunday school class and become involved in one of them. We've got lots of good ones here for adults and children and everybody in between. Um, remind you that we need some help in the nursery. Uh, we we uh, had a meeting last night. We're talking about different options. Somebody said, well, maybe we should pay somebody. to." And it's like, no, we don't want to have to do that. We've got so many folks here that can step up. And you only have to do it, you know, every so often, uh, you know, once a quarter uh, if everybody took a turn. And so uh, this, there's a speaker in the nursery. You could hear the sermon and so forth um, if you want. And you can turn it down if you don't want to hear me. So that's up to you. But uh, that is uh, an option. Also, I want to let you know that um, weekday religious education Hymnsing, Benefit Hymnsing, is going to be held not this Friday, but next Friday night, Friday the 13th, down at Marytown Brethren Church. And uh, it is no charge, no tickets, but it's going to be a free will offering that will all benefit weekday religious education in Shenandoah County. Um, our own Matt Helsley will be providing music, Brian Duncan and others that are going to be sharing in that. And so encourage you to let others know and invite your friends to participate. We also just found out about a concert that's coming up on May the 26th uh, at Harrisonburg First Assembly of God featuring the Hoppers and Promised Land Quartet. It is a uh, fundraising event uh, to benefit uh, Sunshine Ministries and uh, WBTX Radio, and so uh, that too will be a free will offering, no ticket required, and I'll be telling you more about that uh, as we get closer to the date. Um, it's my privilege to serve on the Sunshine Ministries board and um, just a lot of great stuff that they make available to people all throughout our valley and really around the world. It's, uh, it too is, is on the internet now and people are listening really from all over the world. We have a uh, benefit uh, ice cream social to benefit Family Promise that's coming up in June. Um, featuring five of a kind. Some of you all are familiar with them. That's going to be at Lebanon Community Center, uh, sponsored by the Lebanon Lutheran Church and, uh, and Thrivent. And so if any of you could take a, a poster and stick that up somewhere, I've got some of those uh, for the posting. Um, and we've got a new uh, update from Sister Crystal Gosnell John and her husband Raphael. I'll put that on the uh, bulletin board out there and you can catch up in what's going on, the latest from their ministry and also Voice of the Martyrs, um, their latest magazine about some of the folks and what they're enduring in, in India and the persecution that uh, they're enduring. So that's, that'll be on the table back there as well. Um, I want to mention something uh, as those of you all that were here on Sunday or that have watched on live stream know that Sunday's message was a little bit different than some, uh, but I, I am indebted to a, a book that I wanted to share. Uh, we have a copy in our library. It's called uh, Loving My LGBT Neighbor in Grace and Truth. It's written by Glenn Stanton, um, and um, he works for Focus on the Family, and it's a very, very balanced book, I believe, and and uh, treats uh, all of the issues, I think, with a lot of integrity and uh, really gives some great guidance, uh, some of which I was able to share uh, with you on Sunday. And so um, that'll be in our church library that you can, you can check out. 
Um, let me see. We got a joy. I uh, want to thank God for the rain. Um, we got three inches at our house uh, last night, and so uh, really a lot of rain. Um, Penny says, praise God for prayers, the powerful way it connects each of us with God and with each other. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely praise God for that. Um, we are thankful for Celebrate Recovery, uh, Diane says, and so absolutely we are grateful for that ministry as well. Um, we want to thank God, some of the ones that have come across the prayer chain, Josh Sherman and Carolyn Sherman are home and improving and continue to pray for them. We're grateful that Kenny Fadley's surgery went well and he's back home, that Madison Kibler and Ren Fadley uh, are, have also recovered, and we're thankful that Jeff Brown, uh, brother-in-law to uh, Sister Norma, Brother Doug, is also back home. Sister Donna Babcock was able to be with us in, in Bible study this morning, and that was so awesome to be able to see her. Uh, also, we want to thank the Lord. Um, since we were together on live stream last Wednesday night, uh, Nancy and I became grandparents for the ninth time, and we're grateful for little Luke Alexander, uh, and he and his parents are doing well. Um, grandparents are recovering. Diane Heisman, remember Becky uh, Leland's mom? She is in the hospital improving, and so that's a joy, hoping to maybe get out tomorrow. We're grateful that Celesta Carter's heart catheterization went well, that Pat Rosenbaum is home, and uh, also that Tom Hodges' daughter, uh, Courtney, got along good with her surgery on her arm. We're thankful for an answered prayer in regard to Linda Holler, and things have just really turned around and moving in such a positive direction. Thank you for your prayers for her. And I just want to praise God for an individual who came into my office yesterday and said he wanted to provide pizza next Wednesday night for all the blast kids, um, which, you know, tonight that's 80-some or 90, I don't know, so however many we'll have next week. What a generous, uh, thoughtful uh, offer to be able to do that. And so we're, we're very grateful and very appreciative of that. Um, let me see what else might have come in. Thankful for each that prayed for my goat, Gloria. She's doing well, praise God. And so we're glad for uh, healthy goats. Um, other uh, concerns, if you have any of those, send those in as well. I'll mention some that have come across the prayer chain. Our weekly prayer emphasis, pray for our custodians, Richard and Diane Funkhauser, that work here uh, faithfully each week to keep our church clean. Um, remember uh, Sister Mary Ann Downs uh, and her family and the passing of her brother out in Illinois. And also remember her husband, Cy, si, as he recovers from surgery on yesterday. Remember uh, the, the Mickey Thompson family uh, and lift them up to the Lord in your prayers. Pray for Lucille Fadley, hopefully coming home tomorrow. Uh, pray that that takes place. Uh, remember um, the Supreme Court and... Um, uh, Potential praise, it looks like maybe Roe v. Wade will be, be, will be reversed, and so we're praying for that. Uh, but in the meantime, the leak that took place is uh, very concerning, and so pray for our nation in all regards. Pray for Ukraine. Uh, pray for my Uncle Farrell Burner. Uh, he's going to be having surgery on his ear this uh, Monday in UVA to remove skin cancer. So pray for him and continue to remember Doug Klein and Buck Spence. Buck is having radiation and getting along well. Continue to pray for him and pray for Ray Drake that is uh, battling cancer. Remember Nancy Mumaw in your prayers. Uh, she is now a resident at Greenfield there across from the fairground, and so pray for her. Remember uh, Jeff Jett's mom, Mary Ellen Prower, P Pryor, and also uh, Penny Adams' daughter, Kimberly, uh, down south, uh, the, the place that she worked for, both chicken houses uh, burned down, laying houses with all the chickens inside. And so thankfully, the farmer has said, we're going to need you and keep you on to be able to rebuild and all of that. And so thankfully, they will have employment. Uh, pray for uh, Leslie Helsley's brother, Pat Baker, who has an infection in his foot. Uh, also, Norma Doman's aunt, Faye Neff, remember her in your prayers. Remember uh, Betty Wolverton. Betty is a patient now at the Woodstock Hospital, admitted this afternoon uh, with a urinary tract infection, and so lift her up. Remember uh, my friend um, uh, Elon and his wife, Will Nadi, and Haiti, uh, their little baby. Uh, they took to the doctor today, and, and uh, the baby is malnourished and some other issues, so pray for little Jubsom in your prayers. Remember uh, my sister Judy, who's having cataract surgery tomorrow on one of her eyes, 
and Bob Miller's daughter, Samantha Stevens, as they try to figure out what continues to cause her problems. Remember Emma Kibler, who's battling strep, and also um, Wanda Cruz, one of the ladies that uh, waits on us at Ben Franklin's. Uh, she had uh, knee surgery today. I have not heard how that went, hopefully well, but pray for her as she recovers. Remember our young people that are taking tests um, in several different grades, public as well as cottage school and private school and all of that. Um, pray for them. Remember Larry Polk in your prayers, uh, who has a test next week, and uh, lift him up to the Lord as well. Uh, continue to remember the folks in Afghanistan um, and Shams. Uh, remember him as well as all of those that are undergoing persecution. Um, Matt asked us to pray for Tammy Andes. She has some vertigo today, is going to miss worship practice tonight. So pray for Tammy. Uh, and praise God for a beautiful day. The Domans remind us of, absolutely, and so we are very grateful for that. Um, I think that's everything that has come in and uh, everything that I had down on my list. Let me make sure I didn't miss something here. Um, a lot of, lot of things uh, to pray about and to remember and so we want to uh, lift them up to the Lord. Let's do that right now, and we'll go to him in prayer this evening. Father God, we come to you this evening at uh, near the end of a really beautiful day. Started out wet and rainy and ended up sunshiny and bright. And God, we're very thankful for renewing our earth with rain. We thank you, too, for the sunshine and the, the warmer temperatures. And God, just the beauty of the spring and we see around us in so many ways. Father, we're grateful for so many answered prayers, so, so many of those uh, tonight that we remember and give you praise for. We recognize that without you, we would have nothing. You're the giver of every good and perfect gift and every healing and every restoration. And so, Father, we just praise you this evening and give you much thanks and all the glory. Father, we do want to uh, lift up to you this evening the many concerns that we shared. Many of those are for physical healing. And we ask you to be at work in each one of these individuals and their bodies to bring healing and restoration. Father, I pray that uh, we would glorify you in, in health or in sickness and know how we can best do that. But Father, we pray for um, relief from the struggles that we have and, and for full recovery for us and for our loved ones that are, that are hurting in one way or the other. Father, I pray for those that have lost loved ones, those that are battling depression and dealing with difficulty in, in life right now. Father, we just lift them up and those um, that are maybe looking for work and employment or looking for housing or whatever the case may be. Father, we, um, we are grateful for those who serve us in many ways, and especially this evening we remember our custodians and we're thankful for their faithfulness to you and to us um, and the fantastic job they do of cleaning this facility. As much use as it gets day in and day out, week in and week out, uh, that we can come on Sunday morning and worship in something that's uh, beautiful and clean uh, to bring you glory. Father, we're very grateful. Lord, uh, for all of the different folks that help out with Blast and all the other things around here, we give you thanks. And Father, um, we, we pray too that you would continue to raise up uh, individuals that would be called to serve in the nursery or in Bible school or Sunday school in whatever way that uh, you would choose to call. And we thank you, Lord, for that. We do pray for um, our friends in Ukraine. Father, we pray for peace and safety. We pray, God, for a stopping of the fighting that is going on there. And, Father, that you would push back um, against the Russians and, and against Putin and frustrate his plans. And, Father, protect your people, uh, Father, that uh, are suffering in many ways. And so we, we pray. Help us to know what, what we should do. Give our leaders wisdom and knowledge. And we do pray, God, that uh, this, uh, this awful curse of abortion would be indeed uh, reversed and that, um, that the, the case would be struck down and that as a result, Father, the uh, various states would each pass laws protecting these unborn lives. Even as our president said, it is a child inside the mom and Father, even as he recognized yesterday that uh, those who choose that are aborting or killing a child. And so, Father, help us to uh, help the people of this country to realize and understand that. 
Father, bless us as we share together in our uh, time together. We thank you for each one of the young people that will be sharing with us tonight. Pray your blessing on them and uh, calm their nerves and help them to speak with power and authority by the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for their teacher and pray your blessing on Miss Suzanne and uh, each of them and their families. We ask all these things in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. So we are, uh, as I, we sent out on email, and uh, hopefully it's not a surprise, we're uh, looking forward to hearing from students of the Cottage School. Uh, the Cottage School is a collection of seventh graders, homeschool students, that meet here um, uh, for some, some group instruction. We're thankful for uh, Miss Suzanne Clark that provides that and gives them great uh, guidance in lots of different ways. Um, a couple weeks back, as I was looking through one of the magazines that I get, it's from the American Family Association, they advertise in there about a public speaking contest uh, for uh, young people, I think up into age 18, something like that. And um, the, the topic was about the commandment that says, thou shalt not kill. And so uh, these young people have each prepared speeches. They've been actually submitted to the American Family Association. Uh, previously, they've already been sent in. But when I heard some of these, I said, our people need to see them too. It's, it's awesome. And so um, we're looking forward to hearing from them tonight. They're going to come up in turn. And I appreciate Matt Helsley for coming in and making arrangements for our uh, live streaming of that. A little bit different tonight. So uh it's going to require him to, to zero in on some different things, but we're grateful for each one that's going to participate. Um, so let me, uh, Matt, go ahead and maybe switch the mic over and all of that. You can get the camera adjusted so that when our first speaker comes up, we'll be ready to go tonight. Um, you let me know if you think we're ready back there. He's given me the thumbs up. So uh, we are very thankful tonight for our first speaker is going to be Mr. Brody Baker, and we invite Brody to come and share with us the speech that he has written and prepared. Brody? Abortion isn't wrong, then nothing is wrong. This is a quote from anti-abortionist Mother Teresa. God says, thou shall not kill in the commandment six of the Ten Commandments. Abortion is a very controversial topic in our society today, but should not be controversial because it is murder. It is killing an unborn baby. 96% of all biologists agree that abortion is... 96% of all biologists agree that human life starts at fertilization. Six percent of all biologists agree that human life starts at fertilization. We took a moment of silence for each person lost to abortion. We would be silent for over 100 years. This is a quote from, by Frank Pavone. The horror of the statement is powerful and enlightening. This holocaust of over 63 million babies killed since Roe versus Wade in 1973 is more than a Jewish holocaust, is more than a Jewish holocaust during World War II killed. Trying to remember, I didn't know this would happen. Uh, I know. I'm trying to. Job thirty-one fifteen says, "Did he who made me in the womb make them? Did not the same form us both within our mothers?" The second verse, which is Psalm 22.10, says, For from birth I was cast on you. From my mother's womb you have been my God. Um, it is hard to believe that murder is accepted in this country. People are very selfish and do not want to pay a price for their deeds. For this reason, legislation has been passed in the United States that allows us to kill our unborn. 
people are very selfish and do not want to pay a price for their deeds. I already said that. A quote from Ro Jesus died for those babies. A quote from Ronald Reagan should open our eyes. He said, I have noticed that everyone who is for abortion has already been born. There was a woman named Gianna Jensen who was a Selene abortion survivor. The very abortionist who tried to kill her had to sign her birth certificate before she was born. She was diagnosed with, during, well, after she was born. She was diagnosed with cerebral palsy due to the attempted abortion. She was adopted and has forgiven her birth mother. She travels and speaks against abortion and for her precious savior who knew her before she was born. Abortion is wrong, and killing a fetus which is one day, one day old or nine months is still murder. Please hear the word of the Lord in Commandment 6, Thou shalt not kill. Brody, excellent, excellent. Good job. Good job. All right. Um, appreciate your... Uh, Appreciate you speaking tonight, and our next speaker is Sarah Grace Poiser. Sarah Grace. Good evening. Um, okay. Blessed Mother Teresa once said, It's a poverty to decide that a child must die so that we may live as we wish. We choose to commit murder so that we can live as we wish. Even though the Sixth Commandment states, we shall not kill. As that is the heart of the matter today. So often we choose to live our lives only to please ourselves and we can even change the laws so that we live selfish lives. 96% of biologists believe that life starts at fertilization, not after the baby comes into the world. To make a life pattern, there must be 23 chromosomes from the mother and 23 chromosomes from the father. Those then add up to the 46 chromosomes that make up the life pattern of these helpless babies. These babies have no way of standing up for themselves, so we must do our part to help. When a woman says, my body, my choice, those choices are to be made maturely and before conception. Isaiah 49.1 says, before I was born, the Lord called me from my mother's womb. He has spoken my name. In my opinion, I believe that abortion is murder and it's not acceptable in any way. 47% of people are pro-life, and opposedly, 49% of people are pro-choice, allowing the acceptance of abortion and people to commit murder rather than acknowledging God's word, which says, thou shalt not kill. A lot of people feel depressed or even devastated after they've made this horrific decision. Ronald Reagan said that I've noticed that everyone that is for abortion has already been born. I believe that if a mother's womb had windows, there would be less abortions and people would think differently. Matthew 18, 14 says, Even though it's not the will of my father that one of these little ones should perish. There once was an idol named Moloch that people worshipped, and people would bring babies to be sacrificed for Moloch. In my opinion, ladies and gentlemen, this is not much different than what is happening today. One is murder before birth, and the other is murder after birth. Regardless, murder is taking a life, and this is not pleasing to God. The Lord loves those babies and has made them in his image, so why shouldn't we? We must stop putting our selfish desires above God's word, which says, Thou shalt not kill. We can't hear everybody clapping at home, uh, but we uh, invite you to give God praise and thanks for each of these young people as they come up and uh, do this. Remember, they're seventh graders. Uh, wish I couldn't speak like that when I was in seventh grade. Uh, awesome, awesome. Justin Green is going to come and share his with us. Justin? America is considered a Christian nation, yet we murder 620,000 innocent babies a year. It is the Father's will that these precious children not be harmed. Matthew 18, 14. The Sixth Commandment states, You shall not murder. We are so selfish to kill an unborn baby just so we can live for our own wishes and desires. 96% of biologists say 
that a human life starts at conception. When the 23 chromosomes from your mom and the 23 chromosomes from your dad meet, that is the start of life. God created the Bible and gave us the Holy Spirit so we can recognize sin and repent. Jesus died on the cross so that we may go to heaven. Christ died that we may live. This is the opposite of abortion. Abortion kills that someone may live differently. John Piper. Jesus died on the cross for us, but we're so selfish to kill an unborn baby so we can live as we wish. It's a poverty to decide a child must die so you may live as you wish. Mother Teresa. Cursed anyone who takes a bribe to shed innocent blood and all the people say amen. Deuteronomy 27, 25. I feel the greatest destroyer of peace today is abortion because it is a direct killing of a child, murder, by the mother herself. How can we expect people not to murder each other if a mother can murder her child? How do we persuade a mother not to have an abortion? As always, we must persuade her with love, and love means to be willing to give until it hurts. Mother Teresa. Many women who have aborted a baby live in years after in grief, all because of one decision. We need to stand up as a nation and say abortion is murder and make it illegal. About 125,000 innocent babies are murdered a day and 40 to 50 million a year. I've noticed that everyone who is for abortion has already been born, quoted by Ronald Reagan. People used to sacrifice babies to Moloch, an idol. They had stabbed them, then burned them alive on an altar. Unfortunately, we are not far from that. We kill babies in the womb. Abortion is murder, and we need to stand up and say it's murder and honor the six commandments. You shall not murder. Justin, awesome, awesome. Appreciate you guys sharing tonight and uh, helping us to think through an issue that obviously I'm, I'm hoping some of our Supreme Court justices are watching tonight too. Um, Carissa Jones is going to come and share. Carissa? Abortion has become the greatest destroyer of peace because it destroys two lives, the life of the child and the conscience of the mother. And that's quoted by Mother Teresa. 96% of biologists believe that life starts at conception. You have 46 chromosomes from your father and 26 from your mother. God made you fearfully and wonderful made. Murder is a crime and killing an innocent baby is just wrong. If typewriters were a thing a long time ago and they aren't around anymore, why is abortion still around? Jeremiah 1.5 said, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I had set you apart, and I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Psalm 139.14 said, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God knew you before you were born. He gave you a life that's in his hands, a life that he knew in your mother's womb. Martin Neimuller once said, First they came for the socialist, and I didn't speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the unionists, and once again, I didn't speak out because I was not a unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I didn't speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak out for me. I am just one person, but today I'm speaking up for babies that have been killed from abortion. The way God creates a human being is through a 46 chromosome pattern. This unique DNA is the pattern for life, is the beginning of a unique individual. Each person has a unique pattern in their own DNA. Psalm 139, 13 says, For you created my inmost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. We were brought into this world because God had a reason for us to be here. We need him to be our way. Robert Casey said, Abortion is the ultimate violence. Abortion is violence, and murdering is violence. Ultimate means the pinnacle of something, and abortion is the last thing that should happen. Matthew eighteen fourteen says, So it is not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should have to perish. When we were in our mother's womb, we couldn't eat or drink. We needed our mother to survive for us to survive. After birth, babies need help to survive. Often this has been an argument supporting abortion. 
It is said because an unborn child cannot survive outside the womb in this world by itself. After birth, a baby cannot survive on its own, but we don't say that it isn't alive. In the Bible, Exodus 20.13 says, You shall not murder. Abortion is murder, and murder is a crime. Carissa, awesome. Good job, gal. Excellent. Um, we are thankful tonight. Um, our last speaker live will be Matthew Richards, who also won the um, BB gun range for his age group here uh, last couple of weeks here at Blast. Uh, but Matthew is going to come and share his speech with us. Matthew? Did you know that reported abortion has been around since the 1850s? How have we allowed this atrocity to continue? Here are some pro-choice arguments. Some women say it's a constitutional right to choose to end a pregnancy, but it's not. It's indeed murder. 96% of biologists believe that life begins at conception. At that moment, women have 23 chromosomes in their meiosis cells, and men have 23 chromosomes as well. When those chromosomes come together, forming 46 chromosomes, a human is formed. Found in those 46 chromosomes is your entire life pattern. Not one cell, all genetic information is present. To complete the information, here are some quotes and scriptures as well as some of my thoughts on abortion. Quoted by Mother Teresa, there are two victims in every abortion, a dead child and a dead conscience. Also stated by Mother Teresa, by abortion, the mother does not learn to love, but kills even her own child to solve her problems. In Psalm 127, 3, Behold, children, a heritage from the Lord, fruit of the womb, a reward. I believe that abortion is murder, and you shouldn't kill. This isn't okay. People should have their own rights, but no one should be allowed to murder. Murder is terminating a life, and that is what abortion does. In Ephesians 2.10, it states, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, and which God prepared in advance for us to do. We are made in God's image and placed into our mother's womb. We were alive before we were even born. Most women say that they regret abortion for most of their lives. It's really depressing knowing that many people are pro-choice, pro-abortion. Announced by Mother Teresa, I feel the greatest destroyer of peace today is abortion because it is a war against the child, a direct killing of the innocent child, murder, by the mother herself. And if we can accept that a mother can kill even her own child, how can we tell other people not to kill one another? How do we persuade a woman not to have an abortion? As always, we must persuade her with love, and we remind ourselves that love means to be willing to give until it hurts. Abortion is murder, and it should be treated as such. The Sixth Commandment even states, Thou shalt not murder, and we should obey God. Matthew, excellent. Um, each one of you, uh, young men and women, thank you so much tonight for coming and sharing. And um, Miss Suzanne, you said that the American Family Association is hoping to broadcast these somehow. Um, and so when we find out what that is, we'll try to make sure we send that link along or whatever so folks can, can join in and see that too. Um, so uh, thank you, young men and women. Um, Matt, were you able to get the other one to work? Awesome. So we have uh, one that was done, recorded earlier that couldn't be here this evening, um, Cassidy Leak. And so I'll turn it over to Matt to make that happen. I believe that every abortion is a tragedy, quoted by Dan Abbott. In the Ten Commandments, Commandment 6 says, Thou shalt not kill. In the biblical years, the people who did not know the real God worshipped idols, which are man-made statues. One of these idols' name was Moloch, and they would kill babies and lay them at the altar of his statue. Any country that accepts abortion is not teaching its people to love, but to use violence to get what they want. That's why the greatest destroyer of love and peace is abortion. 
96% of biologists believe that life begins at conception. Meiosis cells are formed containing 23 chromosomes from each parent, 46 in all. 46 chromosomes complete the God-made pattern of you in all of your physical characteristics. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Psalm 139, 14. God made the Bible so that we would come closer to him and to be kind and peaceful and love everybody. Not for us to destroy all of the good in the earth. God made the Ten Commandments for us to see our desperate need for him and to come closer to him and for his son to help us live our lives. It can take a whole life before you know Jesus. But if you know him before you die, you will go and live with him and have eternal life. We should all try and make abortion illegal. Mothers and fathers should not have to suffer that it is legal. We should spread God's word and help people who are hurting physically and mentally either because an unwanted pregnancy or making the decision to abort a baby. Some parents don't discipline their children to know what is right from wrong. And the result of that is growing up without a conscience. Instead of listening to the Holy Spirit's Spirit, they are influenced by what others think or just to make a person feel good. This is a tragedy in our society today. We should have, we must have conscience for God's voice and obey commandment six, thou shall not kill. All right, uh, and everybody said, um, what a fantastic, fantastic job, and I, I thank each of those students, and I thank also their teacher, um, Miss Suzanne, for helping them uh, to, to put those together, including scripture and research and statistics and quotes and all of those various things uh, along the way. Um, that, I don't know about you, but that surely gives me um, faith in our future. And I know a lot of people say things about the next generation, this younger generation and everything else. And uh, I heard somebody say once that young people are a lot like airplanes. You only hear about the ones that crash. And uh, unfortunately, that's sometimes true. But I think we need to hear from those that are doing really well. And we heard from six of them tonight. And um, what, a, what a fantastic, outstanding job. I was reading through some of your comments here that you all sent in. Um, yeah, seventh graders, absolutely. The cottage school is such a blessing. They, they do lots of things around here for us. Um, just uh, individual comments for each of the speakers and all of that. And um, just uh, really, really very thankful for each of them, challenging us and uh, looking forward one day to some some pastors and some preachers that are going to be unafraid to stand before their congregations and proclaim God's truth about this and other issues. Um, the uh, Penny says, these young people are just amazing. Praise God for Suzanne. What an amazing witness and leader she is. Uh, absolutely, absolutely true. Um, since we're since we're on this topic tonight, we had no idea when we made arrangements for this this evening that this whole thing would blow up this week uh, with the leak, uh, the intentional leak to try to uh, force the issue or whatever regarding the Supreme Court. Praise God! It looks like apparently maybe uh, at least five of the justices uh, are in favor of overturning Roe v. Wade. Praise God. I pray that's the case. Now, that doesn't make abortion illegal. What that does is it allows each state to make their own choice and their own decision about abortion rather than the federal government saying, 
No, it's got to be legal everywhere. And so um, really it goes back to something that our founders came up with a long time ago with this concept of states' rights, that it was up to the individual state to make choices about various things um, regarding the people that lived within their borders instead of a strong federal government, a national government that would impose its will on every single uh, state. But as we think about this tonight, um, Nancy and I were talking a little bit uh, the last day or two about this whole thing, and, and it comes really close to home because, as I shared earlier, we have a, a new grandson that was born just last Thursday. And I, I just can't even think for a moment about that little boy not being here, um, and especially by someone's conscious decision. Um, and, and so we, we actually had a, the, the governor, Governor Northam, that said even after the baby was born, he would kill it if the parents so desired, even after it was born. And, um, and a lot of people embraced that and supported him and, and failed to call him out and say, that's murder. That's exactly the opposite of what a, uh, a doctor, which he, which he is and was, uh, says that when they take the oath that they will do no harm. Um, just unthinkable. Um, it was very telling, again, as our, our president on just yesterday talked about aborting a child. And so usually the, the folks on that end talk, they never use the word child. They try to take that out of it. They call it a fetus and whatever else. Um, but he actually said abort a child and uh, recognizing the fact that it is, in fact, a human being. I'm so thankful for the pregnancy center here in Shenandoah County um, that, that loves children, that loves moms, that loves dads, that loves families, that loves Jesus and, and helps folks find a holistic answer to their, to their challenges and, and um, in many cases, uh, you know, helps moms decide to keep their own children or maybe have them and put them up for adoption um, to find ways. It's not, it, it is unfair. Some of our speakers mentioned tonight, it's not just a matter of saying, well, you need to make the right decision. We, we need to help. And certainly as a church, we need to gather around individuals and help them make the right decision and help them with the challenges uh, that they face of raising a child, perhaps uh, as a single parent or in a situation where they have little or no income. Um, I'm thankful that there is healing that is available. Uh, as was mentioned by several of the speakers, uh, it is something that many people struggle with even years later, not just women, but men as well, uh, for decisions that were made previously. And so thankfully, there is healing available, and they have Bible studies and regular uh, sessions there at the Pregnancy Center to help with that as well, and I'm, I'm very grateful for that. Um, one of the arguments that's being, you know, put forth is about the, uh, you know, a woman's reproductive right, uh, when in fact, what about the reproductive rights of those unborn women? Um, a majority of abortions occur to female babies, and a large majority, uh, the, the, per the percentage that are black children is very skewed, very high. And so we've got all this talk about racism today. Um, and people are so concerned, Black Lives Matter, and so on and so forth. And yet, many of the folks that are screaming about that say nothing about literally millions of black lives that are, that are taken before they ever draw their first breath. Um, it's, it's just really unthinkable and unbelievable. Um, at, at least be consistent with, with what you're saying. Um, some of the statistics they shared about uh, 620,000 a year, 620,000 a year um, in this country. And then worldwide, the figure I think they said was something like 40 to 50 million. Uh, right now, the world has been horrified by what's been going on in Ukraine. Uh, and rightfully so. We're getting these images back, and uh, we're seeing these things. And remember, about a month ago, they actually, the, the Russians hit a maternity ward, and, and where the moms were just giving births, and, and people were horrified. They were outraged. And yet, even worse happens 
with abortion every single day and and people are standing up and say oh you got to be able to give people the right to do that and and so on and so forth and um it's i i just uh, find it find it unthinkable um yes the court has made mistakes in the past they said at one time it was okay to have separate education for various skin colors as long as it was equal they said and then they came back later and said that's that's inherently unfair that's not going to work and so they changed that they reversed it um, several times over the years when the supreme court has decided one thing came back later and said we got it wrong and so just because it was decided by a court in the 1970s um, doesn't mean you know as i said sunday just because i spilt my coffee doesn't mean i have to keep spilling it uh, at some point, you say, I need to make a better decision. Um, we've got uh, some, some thanks that came in. And Diane says, yes, a Governor Northam, a pediatrician, uh, no less. Um, praise God, they have a Christian leader and parents who raise children to love and fear the Lord. Um, absolutely. Uh, may, a, couple other question, a couple other thoughts came to my mind as they were sharing tonight. Um, one of the things that's been discovered also when the original, and you could send in comments or questions or whatever else, but one of the original, um, the case that came forward, Roe v. Wade, um, was based on lies from the beginning. You go back and look at that original case and what we now know, the, the, the woman in the case admitted lying about the situation and a number of lies that the whole thing was built on from the very beginning. In this country, if I go out this afternoon and I, or this evening and I find an eagle nest and I destroy one of those eggs, then I, I am liable and will pay an enormous fine and likely spend time in jail. But if I call myself a doctor and I go into an abortion clinic and I take the life of an unborn child, then that's protected. And, and so we're talking about an eagle versus a human being made in the image of God. Now, I'm not against taking care of eagles. I think, you know, they need to be uh, respected too. But for crying out loud, um, why would that same not be, um, not be applied? Um, some of the students talked about innocent blood. And if you look at the, the Bible, it talks about the shedding of innocent blood. One of the things that led to the downfall of the nation of Israel was when Manasseh, King Manasseh, shed so much innocent blood um, that, that God had to judge that nation. Even though he turned from that later, uh, those deeds had been done. And, um, and Babylon overthrew and overtook and overcame. Uh, they, one of the students made the comment about the Holocaust, that more, more babies have been killed. In this country, uh, the figure is, they said, over 63 million. That's over 10 times the amount uh, of, of people that were killed in the Jewish Holocaust. Um, over 10 times. And I like the, one, uh, the comment that said, you know, if a mother's womb had windows... And one of the things, you know, now because of ultrasound and some of the other technology we have... Um, we are realizing how these are, these are human beings. Um, the, the, they really are. And, and when a mom and a dad can see their child and realize uh, what they have and who that is, uh, they can't help but fall in love with that, with that little bitty baby. Um, thankfully, we are putting some windows on, on uh, mother's wombs through that technology. Uh, Diane says, interesting that if a pregnant woman dies in a car accident, there are two deaths. But if a woman wants to have an abortion, it isn't the taking of a life. Uh, absolutely. And the same is true if it's, if it's a murder. Um, the, the murderer gets charged with taking two lives, except when the mom decides the day before she's going to go down the street uh, and get an abortion. Or dad, too. I'm, I'm not just putting this on women. This is... Um, obviously, a baby doesn't come about by, by, by just a mom. And, and uh, so let's realize, and I'm not against choice. I, by all means, I'm, I'm for choice. Uh, every, every person has a choice whether or not they're going to have sexual intercourse. That's a choice, except in the cases of rape. And we can talk about that uh, another time. But virtually all of the, almost all of these are not rape. And, uh, and so, yeah, you've got a choice. But after you have made that choice... You should not have a choice to terminate uh, that life. Um, Penny says, yes, Diane, there are cases where a pregnant woman is murdered 
and charged with double murder. It is double murder, and killing a baby through abortion is, is murder, um, absolutely. Um, I appreciated the references, the biblical references these students made, uh, not only quoting um, Jesus, but reminding us of Moloch, um, the, the god of, I think it was the Moab, uh, the Moab f- where Ruth came from. Uh, great-grandmother of King David. We're going to talk about her a little bit on Sunday. Uh, but their country had this, this God that they would sacrifice their babies to. Why did they do that? They did that to make their lives better. Because when you sacrifice to the God, you believe that that God is going to send you rain so your crops will grow, you'll be able to survive and, and thrive, and you'll be wealthy and, and everything else. Um, in our own country, we may not, we, we may not do it to a, an actual God, but it's the same thing, to make our lives better. That's, that's the argument that, you know, we don't have enough money to support these children and they're going to interfere with my future and all of that sort of thing. Um, and certainly adoption takes that whole argument away uh, if, if you choose to go that route. Um, but the idea of, uh, of the uh, God... Uh, the, the idol Moloch and some of the references, you, you made your children pass through the fire. Um, that's when they burned them. They burned their children uh, in the fire so that they would appease the gods so they continue to have um, uh, rain and crops and all of that. Um, number of different years. If there was a moment of silence for each one, we would have 100 years of silence. 100 years of silence. Uh, very powerful. I've thought about, I'd like to do this. Um, don't, I haven't had time or anything else. You know, some places they will put up like crosses to honor different individuals. Um, and, and if you put a cross up here in our, in our, uh, out here in our yard for every child who died to abortion, it would take 63 million uh, but what about if you did one cross for every hundred or even one for every thousand? It would be a very powerful symbol to remind people how many lives have been taken um, since, was it 1972, when this became, when it became legal. Um, I'm, I'm not naive enough to say that just because it's illegal it's not going to happen. Um, but thank God, uh, theft is still illegal in most in most of the United States. Um, thank God, murder is still illegal of of adults, and and uh, thank God, there's a lot of things that are still illegal. They still happen, um, but thankfully, when someone is caught, then they can be prosecuted and um, and and made to pay for that. So, um, very important. Uh, let me look over my notes here. See. Uh, what other thoughts or comments? Uh, I appreciate the fact that they talked about chromosomes and that every single person is unique. No two people that have ever been made, even identical twins, are not identical totally. Um, they're, they're different. And so um, God <laughs> has such creativity. Um, I, I think I'd run out of ideas after making about 10 or 15 people. Uh, but no, he makes, he, he, he makes billions of them. And each one of them is totally different and unique. Um, Leslie says, uh, sin is sin, murder is murder. And uh, Penny says, these students are a blessing. You better believe it. Um, Diane says, it would be interesting to know the numbers in Virginia. Uh, It would be. uh, Norma says, yes, I agree. They are a blessing. Thank you all for sharing. Um, I'm not sure what the numbers are in Virginia. And... uh, I'm not sure what would happen uh, in Virginia. Thankfully, one of the things that's changing in America is actually people's opinion regarding abortion. More and more people are realizing this is a human being, and more and more of them are opposing uh, abortion. And so uh, it's interesting that some of the people that are saying, this is undemocratic, (laughs) When actually the exact opposite is true, because if it goes back to the states, it will be up to the individuals in those states to vote and elect people that will put in place whatever laws the people want. That's democracy. And so if the people in that state want abortion, 
um, then they can elect leaders that would do that. Or if they didn't want abortion, they could elect those. But they don't want to take that chance. They want it to be legal everywhere for everyone without elections. And so just to, just to beware. Um, each of us are precious and loved by Jesus. Uh, absolutely, exactly right. Um, God has made us, one of the, the speakers said, God has made us all for a purpose. Every single one of us is here for a reason. Even if we don't know what that reason is, we may go through all of life not know what that reason I pray that we can find it somewhere along the way. Um, but we could still accomplish his reason even if we're not even sure what that is. Uh, he could work through us in spite of us. And so every single one of us is here for a reason. We've been talking about Esther in our morning Bible study, and those children have been a part of our morning Bible study. And... Um, trying to help them as well as the adults there understand God has us all here for a purpose and for a reason. And if, God willing, this landmark case is overturned in our lifetime, it will be the answer to so many prayers over so many years by so many people. Um, and, and it looks like maybe that's going to be, I pray that's the case. And, um, and I, I pray, as I say, for our country to... To do the right thing, we, you, could, you could do this one of two ways. If you take away the supply, there won't be any abortionists. If people say, I don't want this, uh, it, it'll be gone. And so it's, you don't have to legislate it out um, if, if people just quit doing it. And so that's my prayer, that we might reach people, number one, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And as we begin to know Jesus and begin to see things from his perspective and, and see things from a biblical worldview, then uh, we can begin to uh, act and behave and live the way that he wants us to live. Um, Norma says it's sad when a student is smarter and more caring than adults. It, it absolutely is. But thank God for those young people. And uh, share this link with others so that they can hear these children um, and, and hear what they have to say. It's just very powerful. Bernie says these kids are the beginning of a revival. Praise God. Been praying for that. And so we are looking forward. Um, Penny says these students are our hope and many like them. And so uh, we're praying for that. We're going to close with prayer and then God willing we'll come back to 2 Thessalonians. Actually next Wednesday I'm hoping to have Mike and Holly Cooley with us before they, they're heading back to Africa again very soon. And so I think they're going to be here next Wednesday and we'll have them talk about what's been going on, what's going to go on. And then we'll come back and finish up uh, the book of 2 Thessalonians, um, God willing, uh, the, the week after that. So uh, let's go ahead and pray tonight before we finish. Father. I just thank you for each one of these young people tonight. I thank you for Brody and Sarah Grace and Justin and Carissa and Matthew and Cassidy. Father, I thank you for the adults that have been important in their lives, their parents as well as Suzanne. Father, their teachers up to this point as a part of the, most of them a part of the Growing Tree School and others that may have been homeschooled or whatever else. God, I, I thank you. And I pray, Lord, that you would indeed, this would be that spark of a revival. This would be that seed that begins to grow and, and fill the whole earth. Father, I, I thank you for their courage, their boldness, their wisdom, their insight. Um, Father, I thank you for their faith and, and their reminder to all of us what you say and what your word says. Bless each of them as they grow. And Father, I, I pray that you would bless Suzanne. I thank you for her work with them. And uh, Lord, I thank we as a church have certainly been blessed by their presence here this year. And Father, we pray that you would reveal whatever that should be for the year to come. Father, bless each one that has joined us uh, tonight. And um, we thank you for everyone. And we pray that you would keep us safe and healthy till we're able to be back together again. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, thanks to Matt tonight for making that happen, and uh, thanks to each of you, and we'll look forward to seeing you back next week, God willing.